Thank you, Malcolm. Good afternoon, everybody. Don't believe a word Malcolm says. I've had the pleasure of knowing him for over 20 years now, and I thought I got rid of him once by sending him to Australia. But uh, unfortunately, oh, no. he came back like a bad penny. There you oh, go. no. And I'll come your way soon, too. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for attending this afternoon's presentation from Bulwark Safety Systems. Um, uh, Fortress Interlocks are going to be hosting an introduction to the B11 LMSS Licensed Machinery Safety Specialist course and what you can expect to uh, get from the course uh, um, over the instalments that, um, that follow when you take this course up. For those of you who don't know, Bulwark Safety Systems have never worked with us in the past. Uh, we're a trusted partner of Fortress. We are an industrial West Coast safety distributor that handles everything from your machine safety through risk assessments, uh, through um, pedestrian safety, and also fall protection. So if there's anybody out there that needs any help with their machine safety, or indeed any part of their plant, from forklifts all the way through to floor, um, um, signs on the floor, uh, to the more complex systems of uh, functional safety on machinery, then Bulwark would love to help you out. So with that in mind, I'm gonna hand you over to uh, Malcolm, who you've already heard from, and Leila Luenek Navarate. Um, Malcolm's been with Fortress, what, over 30 years now? And um, Leila's yeah, new to the job. So you've got the, yeah, so, you, so you've got the uh, bit long in the tooth and the brand new sparkly version of Malcolm to talk you through the details of the BL11 LMSS course. And then I'll talk a little bit more towards the end of it and we'll answer some questions as you go along. Feel free to post any questions as Malcolm will uh, detail and uh, we'll take it from there. So over to you, Malcolm and Leila. All right, hello everybody. Uh, thank you for attending and for joining us. Um, we're just going to, yeah, get started right now. Yeah, so let's see what we're doing today. All right, so we have the loveliest of our LMSS attendees, Miss Lucy, who's going to be taking us through the content list of this webinar. Um, first, we're going to start off by just setting the scene a little bit, giving you a little bit of context into um, LMSS and, you know, where it came from before we get into the meat of the presentation. So the logistics, how the course operates, um, and then the course content. And finally, if you hopefully like what you're hearing, we're going to get into how you can register for the course. Uh, then we're going to have a quick pop quiz. And finally, we're going to round off with some questions. All right, so now just moving into the setting the scene sort of section, uh, just to really grasp the kind of purpose and structure of LMSS, we thought we'd just quickly introduce where it came from, why are we here, so as an industrial safety organization whose uh, business is primarily U.S. based, uh, we're quite familiar with safety in all aspects of the world. Um, but there was a pretty decent sized gap that we noticed when we came to standards with respect to the United States. So that is, while well, we saw a lot of material relating to the international ISO standards and the European EN standards, we realized that there was very little specifically on U.S. regulations. Um, and to us personally, that was problematic for a few reasons. So first, the ISO standards were written primarily by Europeans uh, using those EN standards as templates. Second, they focused on um, requirements for suppliers of machinery versus the actual users of said machinery. And third, they view risk assessment through the sort of tedious lens of um, hazard-based approach where any and every little tiny hazard must be addressed regardless of you know, the relevancy to the task at hand. And then looking at the different standard options, we found that the ANSI B11 standards directly addressed some of these regional gaps, these knowledge gaps, um, as they were designed by US machinery safety uh, standard users, excuse me, for US machinery users. So some of the reasons why we decided upon that was that they specifically concentrate on US legislation, regulations, standards. They include requirements for machinery users versus suppliers, uh, which makes them more appropriate for uh, employers and supervisors. They emphasize task-based risk assessment, which to us we felt was just more cost-friendly, more efficient, more kind of a logical approach to safety. And they also address additional safety topics that aren't covered in ISO, 
but are still pertinent to the US market, such as uh, legacy machinery. Oh, your slide change. I'm doing the technical bit, so it's all yeah. going to go horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Um, okay, now after realizing the value that was present with the ANSI V11 standards, we over at LMSS aim to make this information as accessible as possible. So a new safety machinery training course was thus born. So if you've been interested at all in safety training before, you may have heard of the HILTS or the TUV courses. Uh, but like I mentioned just a moment ago, these courses are founded upon ISO, which unfortunately fall short in terms of their value to the US market and the US machinery safety user. So there's no recognition of ANSI standards, no recognition of um, IMS systems, no lockout tagout coverage, doesn't cover RIA 1506, and does not cover the electrical design standards. And then on top of it all, it's a little bit pricier. Yeah, so, it certainly is. Yeah. Hey, Layla, then... hey, Layla, just to jump in on that part there, this is Andy again. At Bulwark, this is where we find this um, safety standards training to be exceptional for the US market. Um, you can see the other two suppliers, PILTS and TUV, they really just purely focus on the international standards and the IEC standards, mm -hmm. and they don't take into account the new ratified B11 standards within the US marketplace. So we're finding this has been really beneficial for us guys over here because it really points to the uh, facts that you guys are looking to get answers for. So that's, that's what we find anyway, just as a, as a quick um, add-on there. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you. Oh, you want to move slides again? Sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm being a very <laughs> poor assistant here. No, no worries. Um, and then so we're just going to move into the meat of the presentation, what I'm sure everybody's here for, uh, the logistics and the course content. Um, and just for a pretty visual image, here's all of the standards that are covered and then some as well by the B11 LMSS course. And what do the presenters look like, I hear you asking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what exactly does LMSS and what do those instructors that you're going to be, you know, dealing with kind of look like? So for starters, um, it consists of five modules, which to clarify is just a fancy word of saying classes, class sessions. Um, and these are each five hours long, conducted live online um, by at least two of our esteemed standards experts. So in the picture here, you get a delightful view of Malcolm, um, as well as Eve uh, Edwards, one of our other presenters as well. And um, then we have a new instructor, uh, Miss Jenny Turcher from former Procter & Gamble fame. Um, and Jenny and Malcolm, who will be your primary instructors, presently sit on multiple ISO and B11 committees, um, and they each have over 20 years of experience in the industry. So very esteemed, very lovely. And then moving back just a little bit to the um, online part of the course that I mentioned, we do intend to begin in-person training hopefully by next year, God and COVID willing. But at the point presently, we will continue, or rather at that point, we will continue to run the online option, um, which our attendees so far really do appreciate for the freedom of scheduling that kind of comes with it. You don't have to take the modules in order. Um, you can reschedule whenever you so desire. Um, so you can kind of mix and match your schedule at your convenience. And then hopefully as, oh. Oh, sorry, you yeah. <laughs> I thought we'll try and get in early this time. No, good there. Um, yeah, so as you've kind of noticed, I hope, um, we like to present in a very informal sort of style, participation is highly encouraged. Uh, we really shoot for the sort of fun kind of teacher interaction. So, you know, nobody falls asleep on us positively. And then last point before Malcolm shifts, um, in order to achieve the kind of official B11 LMSS certification, there is a 90 minute long 50 question exam. So if you've got your math rights, 10 questions per module uh, conducted online. It's open book, open notes, and we do offer a practice exam as well. Um, so we try to make it as easily facilitated as possible. I can move now. Yes, Excellent. there we go. Um, and then also, as I hope you've already guessed, we at LMSS and Bulwark are quite fond of our program, but we do recognize that you'll be coming from this at a, as a, an attendee standpoint. So we figured that we have, uh, you know, some of their kind of feedback that might be appropriate to share. We've had so far 10 cohorts of successful LMSS graduates as of this point, uh, with our 11th to be completed next week. Week. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, you're right. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we'd like to sit at about 20 people per module to allow just for sufficient engagement opportunity. Anything more than that's a little bit 
a little bit difficult to manage. Um, and here, just wanted to demonstrate some of the feedback that we've gotten from those 10 cohorts as of this point, just communicating the breakdown of the attendees and some overarching testimonials and ratings. Um, we've been lucky enough that people seem to like us. So trying to give you a bit of background on the, the, uh, the material that's covered in the course. And we kick off in module one with B110, um, which was only published in 2020. So it's an up-to-date standard. And this is one of the other big variances that we see with a lot of the ISO standards. So the current equivalent ISO standard, ISO 12100, is over 10 years old. Um, so B11 is absolutely trying to keep up with the, uh, the latest standards. I think the oldest B11 standard we cover is four years old. And that is, we'll come up to that in a minute, I'll tell you which one it is. So B110 follows that task-based risk assessment approach and then goes through some of the requirements, the basic requirements around risk reduction measures, where you look, et cetera. We take you through that, point you in the right direction. This is not about reading material off a page to you. This is about giving you um, course content. Um, I think there's about 150 slides on average per module. We give you the course content. We give you guidance around where to look in the standards. And B11 uh, standards Inc. also give you a discount from the standards um, when you attend the course. So B110 first, that then leads into selecting risk reduction measures. So we've done the risk assessment. We now need to select risk reduction measures. And we take you through that process in B1119, which is probably the best value standard for money in machine safety out there at the moment. So I think in order to to buy the ISO standards around that, there are probably something in the region of 20 standards you would need to buy that are included in B1119. And a lot of that is data like safety distances, et cetera, is included in one place, easy to access and very clearly done. And one of the beauties of the B11 standards is having normative references as in, this is what you have to do, but then have explanatory notes. And we take you through that process that guide you through those explanatory notes and, and kind of make the standards, we try to make the standards more accessible. Um, uh, as I think, Mark, that's, that's the one thing that sets the B1119 apart from the other ISO and IEC standards is those normative references on the side. It just makes a lot more sense rather than having to read through paragraphs <laughs> and paragraphs of technical yeah. information and then have to somehow translate that in your own mind. Yeah, and this it really not, gives you the common man's touch of area. Exactly right, Andy. And it's not even the technical stuff. It's the fact that it's written in standards language, which has to be in a certain style. But then to have informative notes written in a way that explains that makes it so much easier to follow. So I couldn't agree more with you on that. Um, and in that similar sort of vein to exactly what you're saying, uh, module three, we go into B1126, which many people may not be familiar with. But that is essentially a guide to ISO 13849 and safe control systems. And the beauty of that standard is the 112 or 115, depending on whether you believe Jenny or myself. So I'd probably go with Jenny. She's right on most things. Um, examples. Um, so the schematics in there, wiring diagrams, showing you, as an example, how you would wire an e-stop in a Category 4 um, uh, architecture circuit. Um, if you're in meeting performance level D or E, et cetera, it explains exactly how you do does it, does it, it gives you the thinking behind it, it gives you the circuit diagram explaining how all that works. Again, very, very good value um, um, for money standard with all of the examples. Examples aren't typically included in the ISO standards. Um, we move on to module four, and we've just been presenting module four today. Um, we uh, That's B1120, which is integrating machinery into a system. We think that's becoming way more important than say 10, 15 years ago, as we see more automation, more um, use of multiple machines within the same safeguarded space. And it kind of naturally flows into the robot standard um, R1506, where um, quite often you see multiple robots within the safeguarded space, and that ties directly back to integrating machinery into a system. Um, now R1506 is not a B11 standard, it's published by um, the Robot Industries Association, um, and we see some different terminology in there, and we also look at some of the technical reports that surround that that are required. Because it is a direct text adoption of an ISO standard, there are some other bits and pieces we have to consider. So um, we, we give that a good go. We've done that exactly that today. Um, and then the final module, um, and this is my favourite, so I, I don't get out much, um, but um, lockout, tagout, or the control hazardous energy. 
I think is one of the most misunderstood topics in the USA today. Um, and mainly because OSHA doesn't really think Z244.1 does what they would like it to do. So OSHA has openly stated that following ANSI Z244.1 does not necessarily mean you will meet OSHA's regulations. And that's a, that's a, a, a statement that kind of, well, you think, well, is there value in Z244.1? There absolutely is. And one of the things that we do is take you through some of the guidance documents that are used by OSHA inspectors themselves. So we have access to a, a whole bunch of information. Um, we've been working a little bit with OSHA. Uh, we've also been working with some major consultants who have spent 30, 40 years in this industry around controlled hazardous energy. And my top tip from that is not all energy is hazardous. You don't have to isolate everything. There is good energy, there is evil energy. Sometimes you need to maintain energy to keep people safe. And that's something, one of the things that we'll be looking at, as well as case studies, where companies have challenged OSHA citations, which have basically set the benchmark for uh, this whole alternative methods issue when you choose to use alternative methods rather than lock out tagout. Very interesting topic. Um, it will eventually become a standalone module, I think, because there is so much interest. So why would you want to sign up to this, I hear you say. So for the professional out of this, you're getting a qualification. You're increasing your value to not just the business you're currently working for, but the business that you, you may work for in the future. Um, we are, you, you will be able to demonstrate that you have competence in, in um, machinery safety and, and understand some of the differences between the ISO standards and the way US regulations, OSHA 1910-147, OSHA um, 1910 the way that they specifically um, uh, are compare to the standards or uh, are applied which are different to the ISO standards and some of the European legislation, et cetera. Um, and then you're thinking, well, as an employer, I'm now gonna lose my employee who's got this qualification that's gonna help him. But, but in all seriousness with this, it's gonna reduce the potential for machinery accidents. We think it will help you be more productive. We think it will reduce your maintenance um, cost. We think it will ensure that you comply with regulations, particularly the OSHA regulations. So there are benefits for all parties involved in this. And that's the feedback that we're getting at the moment as well. So you're thinking, well, I'm, I'm loving this and I want to go and sign up immediately. Um, I, can, I can sense that. So um, essentially, I'm going to hand over to Andy a bit here. Bulwark is the place to go to. These guys have had uh, 30 or 40 people go through the course so far. What do they need to do, Andy? So um, what I would say first off, Malcolm, is you're talking about that last slide um, where the employers get a real benefit from harmonising an approach to their machinery safety standards in yep. the way that they do things. Um, it really lends itself to easy documentation, which is what you need to provide to OSHA when they come knocking on your door. It really provides itself to a standardised approach to... Um, making your machinery safety and makes your life a heck of a lot easier by understanding the requirements in law from B11 and what you need to do to make your machine safe from grandfathered machinery all the way, all the way through to brand new OEM machinery that's going out the door. So I know that the customers that I speak to that do this course and then implement it in their business do find a heck of a lot of benefits for them uh, in, in time and money and documentation and how they actually make sure they've got that peace of mind that their machines are, are set safe in stone. So having said that, then yeah, please contact Bulwark Safety Systems. Uh, we'd love to be able to come and see you talk about this a bit more. Um, each, um, uh, um, uh, uh, each unit is $2,500 as a total. Um, now, if you're at a company and you've got five or more employees that you think would benefit from that, then contact us because obviously there'll be um, uh, price reductions that we can look to implement on your behalf to make that more beneficial still. Um, but visit bulwark.one or, or contact your local regional sales manager. If you're in California, Arizona and Nevada, it's myself, Andy Cartwright at uh, andyc at bulwark.one or there's Jason Woody and Chuck Keller in the Pacific Northwest. Um, visit bulwark.one website 
and go from there. All our profiles are on there. You'll see our, exp our experience as safety professionals. And we do have a team of LMSS licensed machinery safety specialists ourselves to help talk you through this. Um, yeah, think, Malcolm, who presents this, I'm, I'm, just going to to big, I'm just going to big you up, Malcolm, before oh, you go right, any okay. further. No, 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 I'll never stop you doing that. And it's a one in a lifetime opportunity. <laughs> so, so Malcolm has been around, as I say, for 30 years. A lot of the last 20 years, Malcolm's been sitting on these standards committees. He's the guy that's actually put in the uh, words on the paper, so to speak. So what he doesn't know about the safety standards throughout North America, Europe, and the rest of the world probably isn't worth knowing and definitely utilize um, um, Fortress's LMSS safety standards course for B11 machines. Uh, and we can certainly put you in touch with the right people at that end as well.